celebrating 17 years of Young Turks. Hello and welcome to Young Turks India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Saina Denugara. On the show today we bring you the story of two brothers who in 2014 initiated a bold experiment to nurture the startup ecosystem in India with a unique brand of startup studios. We are talking about Rohan and Arjun Malhotra's Investopad. We'll talk to them about what they're doing with Investopad and the motivation behind the launch of their new fund Good Capital. Also on the show we'll bring you the story of a couple of startup save back. Misho, a social commerce platform that enables small businesses and individuals to start their online stores via WhatsApp. Wealthy, an online investment management platform, and MyPoolin, a B2B to C payment services company that was acquired by US-based Wibmo in 2018. The fundamental problem is that us investors and even the founders come from a bubble of the top 40 to 50 million economically privileged and we live in a life that is a bubble we come from a family where our father had uh, set up one of india's large it education businesses which scaled turnkey computer education programs across schools universities and private sector institutes and i think through that we were able to see this sort of impact uh, at scale that tech really creates and disrupts in india Now both of us were away at boarding school from when we were 13 onwards and most of our education and most of our work was all outside of India but we're always fascinated by the India story and building something larger and greater here and that something larger and impactful in India took the shape of Investopad a collection of startup studios across Delhi Gurugram and Bangalore and a fund called Good Capital that makes early stage bets on consumer tech and product startups But we've gotten ahead of ourselves. Let's rewind a bit to understand what Rohan and Arjun viewed as gaps in the Indian startup ecosystem back in 2014 when they started up. So let me go back a couple of years. My first job out of college was as a sports agent. So, you know, you're able to sort of work with athletes and the sort of shelter or the cushion that you're providing around them is saying that we'll get you the best sort of contracts we'll be able to get you the best coaches physios trainers doctors you name it right so i i think thanks to my uh, background there i started looking at venture capital through the lens of that industry almost like a service business of its own i think that i run a investment agency from that perspective so i worked for an early stage investment firm in the valley uh, around 2011 2012 And that was an interesting time because that's really when the big paradigm shift around consumer software was happening. And what we noticed is that the density of high quality people within the valley ensures that information moves a lot faster and opportunities are generated a lot faster. Um and how helpful people were to one another. So I think that really shaped a lot of the learnings uh, and what we applied when we came back here before we came back we were then for an early stage startup accelerator in Toronto and Toronto was interesting because it was like India is now it was the early stages of forming the ecosystem and the people that we worked with um they sort of showed us that a lot of exits and opportunities are not created just out of the environment but because of certain people who were making deliberate efforts to connect people to each other and make opportunities happen There was a, a lack of a sort of physical ecosystem that we that we saw that wasn't really you know built out here. And I think we were amongst the first movers in this sort of uh, shared space, you know, call it co-working if you will, model. Uh, but for us, it was always about more than that. Our thinking behind doing the first studio was: can we keep the filter for curation really high? So can we select people that we think may be potentially investable down the line, whether it's in six months or in ten years, it doesn't matter. But we want to keep the filter for talent incredibly high and what we want to guarantee is that if you come to an Investopad studio you are meeting like-minded people every conversation you have should be valuable to you and you have much to learn from um the experience of people as well as connect through the networks of these people so you know what we did was we found that there were three or four pain points for companies very early in their life cycle in-house designers marketers uh growth a uh, strategy and sort of uh, you know sales at a at a high level so we tried to work with high quality entrepreneurs very very early on in their life cycle try to add value in these different areas by hiring either in-house specialists or by going within our sort of uh, india as well as global network depending on the company 
and uh, you know, we ended up working with them to a point where we felt we were comfortable enough to be able to invest in them. We caught up with two startups that InvestorPad is invested in to understand how this works. One, serial entrepreneur and angel investor Kashyap Deora's HyperTrack, which helps developers with building blocks to integrate location features into apps. And Ankit Singh's MyPoolit, a payment services company founded in 2014, which was acquired by US-based Wibmo in 2018. What's common to both startups is that they are product companies out of India, a sweet spot for the folks at Investopad. You know, Rohan uh, does something which we, I and my co-founder, refer to as like a mail storm. I mean, the first time when we met him, uh, you know, back in 2014, and we were uh, just just sort of scouting for co-working spaces, and 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 he he came to know that we were pitching to e-commerce companies. Uh, we just just had an introduction introductory mail. The next day, he had connected with me about 10 people in the e-commerce business to sort of go and pitch. But at the same time, what we really sort of gained from them was that because of their connect, right, of, of them as, as early stage guys being uh, really immersed in the ecosystem in the US and Europe as well, we would want to build out, say, an Indian product using Indian stacks, Indian APIs. But then uh, the, the, the experience, you know, that, that uh, we would get where they would introduce us to folks who have actually carried out, uh, you know, a lot of uh, implementations and who have actually built successful businesses in US, uh, you know, was really helpful. Because, uh, I mean, we, we felt that uh, in, in the Indian context, right, there is, is really like no sort of playbooks and, um, and, and that sort of really helped. And in the case of Kashyap Deora, who has perhaps written a couple of chapters in the How to Build a Product Startup playbook himself, Investopad brought in co-investors that really matter. You know, I've been just surprised with the width and depth of their network, both in India and globally. So when they came in as investors in Hypertrack, they brought in the, uh, the CEO of Jubilant Foods, uh, the Domino's Pizza chain, as shareholders in Hypertrack, and they also brought in the CEO of uh, uh, a, a pretty popular startup in the US uh, called Autonomic, you know, Sandeep Madra, building uh, a stack for autonomous vehicles in the US. And that company got recently bought by Ford Motor Company. Um, so you can see the depth and breadth of their reach. And both of these are very, very interesting uh, shareholders in a company where our mission is to track the commercial movement of the world. Um, and, uh, you know, just sitting in India, understanding the, the business that we were building from a global perspective, uh, being able to get the right people on board, the right investors on board, the right customers on board, um, was just very pleasantly surprising. So it seems like a win-win for startups, but what's in it for investors and advisors that join the Investopad brothers? Every single company that we work with, we try and bring on a couple of people that add phenomenal strategic value to that company, who are conventionally people at a CXO level, who, uh, in that particular industry, who realize that their industry is potentially ripe for disruption by earlier startups like this. And one such mentor, guide and investor is telecom industry veteran Sanjay Kapoor. I have blindly followed uh, the Jack Ma philosophy uh, that uh, once you are in your 50s, then you need to be surrounded uh, by young guys uh, and let them do uh, the stuff and you should do what you are good at. Uh, help them, support them, uh, invest behind them, uh, place your bets on them. Uh, but don't try to do things that they can do naturally better than you. We handhold uh, uh, new startups, uh, new ideas, uh, nurture them, support them and then make a choice on whether uh, somebody else invests in them or we invest in them and then try to help them to be more successful. And from your perspective, it mitigates the risk because you see, you observe, uh, and then you back. And then you make your final bets and commitments. So I think it's a great model. One such commitment by the investor pad team was into a startup called Wealthy. Founded by Aditya Agarwal and Prashant Gupta in 2015, Wealthy is an algorithm-driven investment advisory service. Now, this is a space that's getting quite crowded, but Wealthy's USP is that it has paperless KYC and onboarding of all customers as well as personalized service. Here's their startup story. 
the idea of wealthy came to aditya agarwal while he was running his real estate investment platform get square feet he realized that most of his friends were struggling to invest their monthly surplus and the money would end up lying idle in their bank accounts looking at this clear need aditya ended up discussing this opportunity with his friend of 15 years prashant gupta who was then working at morgan stanley they hit upon the idea of automating investment advisory and portfolio management services once the duo tested the feasibility of their idea they began working on a paperless method of kyc and onboarding and wealthy was born in september 2015 With an idea on paper, the next step was to get an investor on board, and here's how the duo got the folks at Investopad to write them their first check. I had just signed up in office. We are still not incorporated. Our team was still not there. You know, it was still a paper idea. I, I showed him, I showed Arjun and Rohan some research that we had done with a few people, and they said we are in. And they said that how much are you raising? He said two fifty small two fifty k. They said that we'll do this much and I'll get you one fifty k more. And he did that. And the investors who have joined the wealthy story are the likes of Zeeshan Hayat of Topper, Abhishek Goyal of Traction Labs, Samir Sood, and Neeraj Rora of Venture Highway. Let's now take a look at how wealthy works. One can start investing in less than three minutes in a completely paperless manner. With as little as five thousand rupees, as a user, you key in your goals, either short or long term, and the amount you want to invest. Based on this, Wealthy platform uses algorithm fund selection as well as traditional common sense in distributing your assets across different investment tools like mutual funds, debt, and so on. Once you approve the plan, complete your paperless KYC and make an online payment. Your folio is opened typically in less than 48 hours. Details of your investment are then available on a dashboard, making tracking and modification easy to execute. But how does Wealthy ensure that consumer portfolios are secure? One is, of course, uh, you know, latest security uh, uh, techniques that you ensure that your customers' data is secure in all three states. One is at their end. Second is at our server end, and third is when it's you know trans being transmitted from their end to our servers. So that's number one. Secondly, the KYC process that we use, it's it's you know the entire information is captured completely online, and uh, actually you don't need at our end a human intervention to actually complete KYC of customers. And third is money never hits our bank account. It goes straight away from an escrow to uh, the financial institutions, which are very well regulated. So that's the third part we've focused on from a technology point of view to make that uh, escrow service really strong. While Wealthy does not directly charge users any fee to use its platform, a user might spend up to 0.2 to 2.2 percent in payments to fund houses, depending as per the portfolio chosen. Wealthy in turn makes its money by charging fund houses a small fee. But just how wealthy is Wealthy's business? This year we are on track to do, you know, about uh, two and a half crores in recurring revenue, and uh, from a from business point of view, we'll continue to invest in building great product and services because there's so much that can be done, uh, which is not yet been done to help people take better decisions, and uh, uh, and yeah, we are, uh, you know, we'll continue to need uh, for at least next three four years external capital to be able to uh, invest in building those uh, product and services. Now the duo have formalized this investment activity with a pre-seed to Series A fund that they are calling Good Capital. Here's what they plan to do with it. It's a pre-seed to Series A fund. Um, we're going to be investing in rounds as small as a hundred thousand dollars, up to Series A rounds, which may be three to four million dollars. In most rounds, we will be lead investors. Um, we will reserve a little bit of space to bring in individuals that could be really valuable to the company. That's a couple of different kinds. One is founders at a later stage, because they typically have the best um, operational expertise about issues like hiring and scaling a product team and how do you scale a sales process, issues like that. And then the second piece is from business networks. We'll bring in individuals who could be key stakeholders. Um, Of the industry within which the startup is operating, they could provide access to customers, or their signal as an investor could be very strong in helping sales happen. 
With good capital, the brothers are also doubling down their investments around certain themes. One, developer-led or API-led cross-border SaaS startups. Two, global platform plays like Autonomic and Katera. And three, consumer tech in India. But they have a very different lens through which they are viewing this space. There's an incredibly large market and the fundamental problem is that us investors and even the founders come from a bubble of the top 40 to 50 million economically privileged and we live in a life that is a bubble. Now with Geo coming in the market has expanded to the next 200 million. So that's why our investment model and what we look for in terms of startups is we look for founders who are taking their time experimenting in spaces that appear to be underserved that appear to be small but there's but where there's a bunch of different trends to coming together to create a really large opportunity. We have a thesis, right? We say that India is the country of merchants, traders, middlemen, micro entrepreneurs, hustlers, call them whatever you like. But whether you like it or not, they find their way back into a transaction. Conventionally, globally, technology has always tried to cut out the middlemen. But in India, whether you like it or not, they find their way back into a transaction. And because India has slightly broken infrastructure still, mapping, roads, you name it, how can we find a way to actually enable these middlemen to be able to streamline this whole process? That's a space that excites us an awful lot. And Bangalore-based social commerce enabler Misho, founded by Vidit Atre and Sanjeev Bernwal, is a great example of this thesis that the Investopad team has, the B2B2C approach when investing in consumer tech in India. Now, Rohan and Arjun wrote the first check to Misho back in 2015, along with investors like the former business head of WhatsApp, Neera Jaroda, and vice president of Fordex, Sandeep Matra. Today, the venture has raised over $65 million over three rounds of funding. Here's the Misho story. How many of you are familiar with a group like this on WhatsApp? How many of you have caved in and purchased something at least once simply because it was so easy to do so? Well, that's what social commerce is all about. It puts the compulsion in the discretionary spending. But what is just a click in money transfer for a shopper sets in motion a long tail of activities for the seller. Making sure the product is in stock, packaging, shipping and dealing with returns if any. Sounds like full-time work, right? And for platforms like Amazon and Flipkart, it is. But for small sellers, it may or may not be their full-time activity. But whatever side the seller falls on, they have Misho. Misho stands for Mary Shop and was founded in 2015 by IIT Delhi batchmates Vidit Atre and Sanjeev Barnwal. A few years into their jobs, they wanted to start up and their first experiment was with a hyper-local fashion product that didn't quite take off. But during this whole process, we discovered that a lot of these small shops who were on the supply side of our product were leveraging WhatsApp and Facebook to sell to their existing customers. For example, a typical shop, every time they get new stock into their shop, they will take photographs of the new stock, put it on their WhatsApp group and say, I have one piece of this, two pieces of this. If someone wants to block it, please do it right away. And a lot of people used to buy these products from the shop just on WhatsApp. We met so many shop owners who said, we now do 40% of our total business on this WhatsApp group. So that's when we realized that this social commerce, letting these small businesses sell on WhatsApp, Facebook, could be the next big thing in India. And we built the first version of Misho. Misho comes from Mary Shop, letting them create an online shop so that they can sell to their existing customers easily. Let's get get up for the grand reseller Mela. And a lot of people have. Over 2 million sellers to be precise. 60% of whom are homemakers like Madhuvi Reddy of Hyderabad. I started this online business uh, one and a half year back and it was just to earn some extra bucks and once I entered into business, the main thing I liked over here is interacting with the customers. Misho's selling point to onboard sellers on their platform is simple. They needn't make any investment. Well, that statement is correct if you talk purely in terms of capital, but you have to invest at least some time to set up a Misho shop on the mobile app. Here's how it works. The platform automatically creates an online Misho store and you can select what you want to sell, clothes, kitchenware, electronics and so on. You can then update products from various catalogs and even set your own price. Once you've curated the shopping list, all you have to do is send it out to your contacts on Facebook and WhatsApp. 
when you start getting orders from your customer we let you manage a crm in our app you can come back place an order um, and even mark what kind of commission would you want to make in this order we give you that flexibility after that we take care of the complete operations we manage relations with our suppliers we'll pick up the product take it to your end consumer collect money in case of cash on delivery come back and then deposit the money that you have made your commission into your bank account the amount of personalization that sellers can build into their meesho shop means that sellers can sell the same product to different people on whatsapp for different prices thus tapping into a very indian offline shopping behavior that involves bargaining while facebook and instagram might be the lead channels for sales for sealing the deal whatsapp is still the reigning king As of today WhatsApp alone has more than 200 million users in India and this number is only growing. Sprinkle vernacular capability on top of this mix and you have gold at least virtually. So the last one year what we have seen is that we are growing much faster in tier 2 and below cities than we are growing in tier 1 and we see that the pull towards vernacular languages is much stronger for them. That's why we still see about 30 30 35% of our user base using a non english language on the app to sell products and we expect that to grow um we are also giving tools to these guys so that they can even enrich their experience when they're sharing on whatsapp in the language that they speak and the business model and opportunity is more clear today than it was back in 2015 when vidit and sanjeev started out In November 2018, Meesho raised 50 million dollars from investors like China Shunwi Capital, Russia's DST Partners, RPS Ventures, Sequoia India, Ceph Partners, Venture Highway and Y Combinator. But the first check came from Arjun and Rohan Malhotra of Investopad. Me and my co-founder Sanjeev went to meet them and unlike most of our conversations at that point in time with Asian investors these guys didn't say that hey this looks stupid we haven't seen something like this happening they more like intrigued and said let's talk about it more let's see what we can do more about it let's let us understand this better right so much more open mindedness towards something new and over time we kept speaking about it i think they realized that if this works it could be very big that forecast was for real and the mushrooming of competitors like shop 101 Glow Road and Easy Mall, all of whom are funded, highlights the opportunity at hand. But Nisho claims its first mover advantage is intact, and it has now started doing cross-border business from China to bring deeper product catalogs at competitive prices to their sellers. We have started doing uh, China cross-border business so that we could get more access to supply in accessories, Western wear, something that is difficult to find within India. we continue to add more categories such as um like travel products so a lot of product uh building that we are doing in 2019 is to strengthen this whole experience that these resellers can give to their customers how they can get more customer leads of how they can build more trust with these customers of how they can like make more money per customer by cross selling up selling even leveraging other data they have about these users All the very best to me show and welcome to the Young Turks community. With that it's a wrap on this edition of Young Turks. Tell us what you thought of the program. You can write to us at youngturks@nw18.com. You can also ping us on Facebook and Twitter. Our handle is @cnbcyoungturks. Till next time from the entire team here. Thank you very much for watching.